on the 12th of January 2018, Life is Feudal MMO was released. After the previous Life is Feudal Your Own, this new MMO is boasting a huge map fit for over 10,000 people in the same server. It is something to behold, and my, did I want it to be good. I loved Your Own, and this was something incredible. And for a bit, it was actually. Everyone thought it was. We all really enjoyed it, but something told us that it wouldn't last. And oh boy, did it not. Of course, this video is completely my opinion, but I do have research from players of the game, and of course, statistics from player base and concurrent players and things like that. So today, I'm going to be going over in my video, Why Life is Feudal Failed. And now I can already predict the response from this video. It didn't fail. You're wrong. It's an amazing game. Kill yourself, you British shit. And I want to first state that I do actually like this game. I like this game more than you do. And that makes me want to make this video more. Because whilst liking the game, in fact, I would say loving this game. And having so much hope for it, it, it shows how the concept and execution can turn even the biggest fans of this MMORPG straight away. But before we get into the MMO, let's take a look back at the history of Life is Feudal to get an idea of where it came from and how it got to where it is now. Going back to the 17th of November, back in 2015, where everything was bright, when Just Cause 3 had been released and when PewDiePie was not at the fight to his death against a bunch of Indian guys, Life is Feudal Your Own was released. It was a hardcore, realistic, medieval multiplayer game. It was a sandbox RPG with free terraforming, a rich crafting system with presets and modular building constructions. It had engaging survival aspects, no target, physics-based combat, and a unique formation system, along with numerous other features. And my, were people excited for it. Mountain Blade fans, the Toads of War fans even, MMO fans and RPG fans, and even the history buffs alike came together for this game because it was something different. Taking the survival genre that had been so overdone at this point, I mean, this was 2015. This was peak Daisy standalone days. You know, when you have Rust, Daisy standalone, the other ones, what were they called? There were some other ones, they, they're all dead now. I mean, survival games. But it's safe to say how overdone it had been, but it decided it wanted to turn it up a notch. It's like a bit what Kingdom Come Deliverance is to Skyrim. You know, if you compare it to another survival game at the time, it's hardcore, realistic, and I think it was the selling point, but also its downfall. The only real way to play this game was with friends in a clan working together to gather resources, hunting, building, crafting, and going to war eat, but even then, the hours you'd have to put in would take over your life. It really wasn't for the faint-hearted, and this was an attractive thing for a lot of people, but sometimes it's taken too far. It wasn't really a game you could dip in and out of, it was a commitment. But it's always been known as a grindy game, and to be fair, some people love that. To an extent, so do I. And grinding can be great, if, if you're into that sort of thing, if you, know, if you know what I mean. It took real life days for trees to grow in the game. Collecting resources would take hours upon hours, but it often paid off. This immersed people in the game, and almost immersed people in a simulation type experience in this RPG. Eventually creating large structures and items would often strangely make all the hours and work that you put in feel worth it. The game was sort of a tester version though, for the Life is Feudal MMO which we all knew would come later and had been announced by the developers. The devs though could throw players into the deep end with your own. See what sticks and what doesn't, which on paper seems like a great idea. Although, although saying that, so did Angelus and see where that got us. But this is where the updates came, and along with it the first issues. You may think since this was just a taster for the full MMO, the devs would stop working on it once the MMO came out. But no, they wanted to keep it going. Developer updates are still coming out right now, because they want to keep your own alive. But of course this does mean many updates. This meant putting their time into Life is Feudal Your Own, and not the MMO. Most of these updates were pretty similar to the MMO though, and it sort of put the two closer together. It started to cause the two games to feel pretty much the same, just one had a bigger map and supposedly more players on it, and the other didn't. But in all other ways, they were almost identical. Surely it would make more sense to keep Life is Feudal Your Own, the same when it was the only game in the series, but then, once the release of the MMO, making Life is Feudal 
quicker crafting, resource collecting, leveling up and things like that to be so much quicker which actually gives people a reason to play both games. The MMO if players had a bigger clan to play with, they wanted a more grindy realistic experience. Yes, everything takes longer from XP growth to building structures and a faction, but it had a bigger reward and the scale was much larger. But then you still had your own being with players in smaller groups or even solo to make it a bit less grindy and more accessible to a wider audience. It would have been great to keep these two separate, so having an excuse to play both of them or even someone just buy one and maybe not the other if it wasn't their thing, but instead they made the two almost identical games, splitting the player base and each game itself suffered. Now of course, Life of Shield of Your Own is a little bit less grindy, but still not to the extent where it's a drop-in game, which at the end of the day makes more people play it whether you like it or not. Updates caused the expected grind in Life is Feudal to be expanded upon to insane levels. Animals would have to be tended every single real day life or they would die. Maintenance on your buildings, gathering resources would be taken up tenfold to a level where Life is Feudal your own became more of a chore because it was almost a second job. And when the game gets to that level, it sucks all the enjoyment out of it. Now this takes us back to that debate. What is more important? realism or gameplay. Now I know I've mentioned this game before and I've made a lot of videos on this, it's quite clear to say I do like this game, but I'm going to talk about it again. This is Kingdom Come Deliverance and I think it actually delivered, pardon the pun, this quite well. I mean it had great points of realism and story, but also keeping the player in mind. It had a good mix of immersion but also playability, making it extremely successful and people still play it in droves today. For me at least, and I know for a lot of other people that have played it as well, the Life is Feudal developers found people like Realism, and that was the market they were going for, but it was like a kid with a radio. They liked it loud, so they kept turning it up and up and up until it finally burst and exploded. The game had so much potential. The Realism was a great selling aspect, and I know me and most of you guys love Realism, but when it's taken too far, it drives fans away from it. Now let's talk a little bit, I don't want to linger too much about the combat. Now combat has been known in Life Future to be absolutely horrendous, I'm sorry, the combat is terrible, it's laggy, it's almost impossible, where you actually kill someone or not is complete luck. That's not just the servers though, it's clunky, it's bad. It's not got a targeted based combat, which is something like Mountain Blade had, but it didn't quite do it too well because of the sheer scale of this game, it couldn't have those quick time events, it couldn't have quick attack and quick blocking, it was all slow and lumbering. Now wait, I'm not saying that that drove people away, but it probably was a factor of it. But combat wasn't really the selling point of this game, well, a lot of people might have bought it to go into the combat, this was about a medieval life simulator. A bit like Persistent World standalone, if you will. But I've been talking about your own for quite some time, and as I said, the games are pretty similar though. So it does sort of cover a lot of aspects from the MMO, but I'm going to be talking about the MMO for the next section of the video. I'm sure there's still a lot of stubborn fans that will either have left the video at this point to comment or be watching it until the end so they can then roast me in the comments, which is great. I am a fan of this game. And I did love it, but it seems so many people have had the same reaction as me. Just look at the Steam ratings. Both of the games, now for Mixed, have gone into mostly negative. Something happened. The MMO was made for 10,000 people on a server at once. Upon release, there was around six or 7,000 players, which was great. And of course, naturally, within weeks, like any game, it started to drop off, which makes sense. But unlike any game, the rate in which it dropped was existential. Within a few months, only a few hundred people were playing the game, and while this was fine for Life is Feud or your own, which made a healthy player base because the map was a lot smaller, it was a problem for the MMO. The map was so much bigger, made the already over the top huge map seem so much wider and more empty. Before you could run around for an hour or so without seeing anyone or interacting with people, now you can go on and never meet anyone else, no matter where you go. It is so empty. Now Mr. Feudal is a Life is Feudal YouTuber that makes some great videos on the games, but even someone that is known for making games on this series and is known to love it and has a fan base that loves it, he made a video about how the player base had flatlined and the response wasn't very great, people just disliking because they hadn't really watched the whole video. Because he's right. People have left, and, and yes, there are expectations. People have recently come back since new updates have come out, but in the end, it keeps dropping to the hundreds, which for an MMO is extremely low. 
But why is this? What makes the game drive people away? Because the concept is amazing. Most MMORPGs have grinding, at least to some extent. It's what makes the game great in a way and what defines the genre to some people. It's fine in some regards and a game like War Thunder does this really well, having a grind to get planes, tanks, upgrades, yet the grind isn't so long as the next planes can be unlocked fairly fast so you always are working towards something and getting a reward for it. And even in between these big unlocks, upgrades to crews, guns, chassis can be done making it feel worth it, making it feel like something is happening and you're actually working towards something. But that's not really the game Life is Feudal is. Obviously the two are completely different in terms of gameplay, setting and everything else, but I think War Thunder really has a good idea about the best way to include the grind into a game, as some people call it. Whereas Life is Feudal is hours upon hours upon hours for very little reward in the MMO is almost impossible to play solo. Spawning in on the map, you'll find yourself running for hours to find a suitable place to settle. And a quick side note, even playing with a group has a painful starting experience. Choosing a place and then anyone joining after you've chosen that place is having to run literally for hours in the same direction across the map to join up with you. And if that doesn't drive away people, I don't know what will. But it's the same with death. Unless a bed is spawned in, you'll just spawn randomly and have to start all over again. But this brings me onto the monument system. And I know I've been rather soft on the game so far, as I do enjoy it and I think developers have done a great job with what they have. There are just a few tweaks that I think could completely change the play base of this. But the monument system, I have to say, is plain stupid. I have no idea thought that, that something that is such a necessity should be so hard to obtain. In the game, when you set up a base, when you start building, you'll get your resources and your buildings, but they will slowly start to decay unless you claim the area. Chests can provide a small area where things won't decay, but eventually they still do. So to stop this, you can claim an area. With a monument, you'll have to build it. Something quite important and something you'll want to get up pretty soon, you would assume. Yet the resources needed for this take days to collect. Real life days. I don't mean in-game days, real life days. Don't get me started on herbs, otherwise I might have a mental breakdown. And that's even with a large group of people. Otherwise, you're just going to get griefed or your buildings will slowly burn and decay. Now I'm finally going to end the video on something that is a real problem for games in general, but especially a game like this. And this is the dreaded word in the PC gaming community, microtransactions. Yes, of course they are in the game. You can buy things like items, skins, boosts, XP, currency, and so on. But because the game is at such a grind, to an extent that I haven't really seen in any other game before, because the chore of progressing is so soul-breaking, these microtransactions almost become compulsory, which is never a good sign for a game, especially a game you've already paid for. They are unavoidable if you want to progress anywhere in the game. Some people may log on and see massive castles and buildings and wonder how people ever had the time to build these massive impressive structures. And yes, there are massive clans in the game that make more people and make lighter work. But I promise you, at least someone in there has paid for boost or currency to speed up the process, go into the city and buy things that help that. Which means that the more money you have in real life, the quicker everything will be in the game, which happens in a lot of games, but the real problem it is, is without them, the game is almost impossible to catch up or even compete with these other clans. Microtransactions should be, to the worst extent, giving you a boost, but not making you overpowered. In this game, you either use them or you get nowhere. Without them, it takes weeks, if not months, to build even a small fort. So once you've already bought the game, you're able to buy these in-game packs, such as the Pagan, which for £23, you get some skins and in-game currency. I mean, if that's not too bad, that's excusable. But this goes all the way up to £80, which for you American lot is about $100 for a premium subscription to the game. And that's after having to buy it. Or, of course, you could have got it free with Life is Feudal your own if you already had that. But that doesn't really make a difference because you still had to buy Life is Feudal your own. So you're still essentially buying a game and then having to pay on top of it. Even so, though, that deal has been discontinued. So anyone wanting to go and check out both games, I'm thinking they could probably get the MMO free if you first buy Life is Feudal your own. You're out of luck. You, can't, you have to buy both separately if you want to do that now, even though they're pretty much the same game, just on a different scale. Now it's a problem. <sighs> And I mean, fans of the game will complain and saying that I'm wrong. And you can have an opinion on that. That's absolutely fine. You can, of course, have an opinion on whether you enjoy the game or not. But what you can't have an opinion on is facts. There's no such thing as having an opinion on a fact. A fact is a fact. And the fact that the playbase has dropped drastically and that the game is really not going the way it was expected and why it has so many negative reviews 
is a fact. And in my opinion, that means the game has sort of failed at its point in time. But it's a shame. I would love to be able to get into this game and I'd love to get back into clan wars, battling, building impressive structures, but it's just not possible at this stage. I hope something comes of whatever the devs have in plan for the future though, and they make the game into something more accessible for an audience, and I know there'll be comments saying, yeah, we want a realistic game, stop being a pussy, just spend time doing it, realism is good, yeah. Realism is good when it doesn't affect the gameplay, you need to have that enjoyment. And at the end of the day, gameplay is what keeps audiences, not realism. Realism enhances an experience, but a gameplay is what makes it in the first place. I've not done one of these videos for quite some time, a sort of video essay sort of thing on a game, and I think I'm going to go back to them, because I really enjoyed making this video. I hope Life of Feudal, the MMO and your own, can improve and get people back into it, because the potential is incredible. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the like button, it really helps the channel out. But thank you, and until then guys, I will see you in the next one. <laughs>